If you play video games, chances are you've seen some form of health bar used to represent a player or an enemy's HP or hit points. If you don't play video games, I highly suggest that you start if you're looking to create them. Hit points were first coined in 1974 by Dave Arneson when he was creating the small little tabletop game called Dungeons and Dragons. Their previous game, Chainmail, only had you roll dice to see whether you or the enemy was killed. There were a few games in the early 80s that used a hit point system, such as Rogue and Dungeons of Daggereth, but Namco's Dragon Buster is considered the first game to have popularized the use of a health bar, a line I stole directly from Wikipedia. From this point on, games allowed the player to make mistakes without the harsh penalty of death. But, how can I do this in my game? Well, that's what I'm here to tell you. So, first thing I did was create a first-person template project and replace that awful default gunshot sound with my own super cool and awesome one. Pew! 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 Next, I created a widget by right-clicking and choosing User Interface, Widget, and renamed it W Health Bar. We'll go into the palette, choose progress bar, drag that boy into our canvas panel, anchor it to the top left, and position it to your liking. With it selected, we can go over to the details panel where we can rename it to HP bar and set it as a variable. Going down in the details, we have a background image, a fill image, and a marquee image. We won't be using a marquee for this tutorial. Below that, we can see percent sliders that go from a value of 0 to 1, not 0 to 100. I see people making that mistake all the time, and they're left wondering why their progress bars don't work. Play with that slider a little bit and watch your progress bar dance. We can also adjust the bar fill type from left to right to options like right to left, fill from center, top to bottom, and bottom to top. Now that you've gotten bored playing around with the slider and are starting to realize how ugly the default bar looks, we're going to give it a complete makeover with the images you can import from the description. Once you have those imported, Right-click on those images, go up to Asset Actions, Bulk Edit via Property Matrix, and set the Texture Group to UI. Texture groups change compression and LOD settings, and this will make your UI images always look crisp. Go back to the widget and switch out the background and fill images with our shiny new background and fill images, and scroll down and change the fill color and opacity to white. This will make sure it doesn't tint it the default blue. I'm then going to adjust the size of our progress bar to match our image sizes. We also want to add that black border that you see in the thumbnail, so we'll add an image from the palette, set it to our black border, and once again resize it to our image size. We can't make the image a child of the progress bar, so we want to wrap the progress bar with an overlay by right-clicking, choosing Wrap With Overlay. This creates an overlay from the palette and automatically makes the progress bar a child of it. Then we can add the image to the overlay and set both alignments to fill. Unfortunately, the sizing is a bit off since the border is a bigger image than the progress bar, so we need to resize the overlay to the border's image size, then fix the progress bar size by wrapping it with a size box, which will force the size of its children when checking the width and height override. Set those overrides to the size of the fill image and set the alignment to center so it doesn't get stretched to the overlay's borders. This next step is extremely important, so please don't miss it. Play around with the slider again and see how much cooler our bar looks. But we want to be able to see how cool this looks in the game as well, so let's open our first person character and in the begin play create the widget using the create widget node and selecting W health bar. Doing this creates the widget so we know it exists in our world, but it doesn't add it to our screen. We do that with an add to viewport node. We also want to promote this to a variable so we can reference it later. Now when we hit play, our health bar appears on our screen. Back in the first person character blueprint, we'll add our health. We're going to do this with two float variables, a maximum health and a current health. We'll set the max health default value to 100 and the current health default value to 100 as well. The current health will change in game as we gain or lose HP. And to do this, we'll create a function for that called adjustAP with a float input called amount. In the function, we'll set our current health to our current health plus the amount. 
Of course, we don't want this amount to go above 100 or below zero, so we'll add a clamp with a minimum set to zero and the maximum set to our max health variable. However, doing all this doesn't affect our progress bar yet, so let's go back into the widget. A lot of tutorials will teach you to use the bind feature on the percent slider, but this is not ideal because it fires every single frame and that is completely unnecessary for our situation. Instead, we'll create a function called updateHPBar. This will take our player's health variables to calculate our bar percentage. To access our player, we'll add an input to this function called player of type first person character. From that, pull the max and current health variables and divide the current by the max. This gives us a number 0 through 1 that will act as our percentage, which we will plug into our HP bar variable set percent node. Back in the first person character, after calculating our health in the adjust HP function, we can get the widget variable we made in the begin play, and from it call the update HP bar function we just created, using our self node for the input. We also want to call this in the begin play so the bar is correct when we start the game as well. Lastly, I'll make it so we can lose and gain health by pressing the buttons I and O, with input I calling adjust HP with 15 in the amount, and input O calling adjust HP with negative 15 in the amount. And if we've done everything correctly, pressing I and O will adjust our HP, which is displayed through our health bar. Of course, we can improve this with all sorts of things I won't be going over in this video, such as blood screens, camera shakes, and comical grunts. So if you want to see content like that, give this video a like so that YouTube recommends more people to come to the comments and annoy me about it. And speaking of comments, go ahead and leave one of something else you would love to see a tutorial for. While I have you, I also have a $10 course on my website, cobdev.com, on creating a first-person shooter in Unreal Engine, so if that sounds appealing to you, the link is in the description. You can get 14 hours worth of video that will get you a fully-fledged zombie shooter game for only the price of two hot and ready pizzas. If that doesn't sound up your alley, I have another one on its way on creating a horror game, so make sure to subscribe to keep up to date about that. I'm going to cover a lot of the content that's in it for free on the channel, so subscribing is a win-win either way. I hope you enjoyed and or found something useful in this video. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.